Let's go to our last example for functions. And for this one, it is a temperature converter. And it's going to convert a Fahrenheit temperature, temperature into Celsius and vice versa. So let's see how this works. If I enter a Fahrenheit temperature, like 100 degrees, and click convert to Celsius, it displays that temperature in Celsius, 37. Let's say that I say I want 100 degrees Celsius, convert it to Fahrenheit. That's 212, all right? That's boiling, water boiling. What happens if I say the Fahrenheit temperature is the temperature of water freezing, 32, convert it to Celsius? We get zero. All right, so you can see that it is calculating and doing this conversion successfully. All right, let's see how this is done in the code. All right, here, our first function is a retrieval function to get the numbers and to return the numbers to the form. So we define the form, we define our values, convert them into integers, and then set up the function that is going to be called eventually Celsius that's going to calculate on the value. Here's the actual function Celsius. We say take the F temp or the Fahrenheit temperature and run it through our return statement that contains the mathematical formula to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. So it takes the F temperature subtracts 32, then multiplies that by 5 divided by 9. And then as we go down here, you'll see that the same thing happens with the other conversion. It just does it in reverse. So to convert to Fahrenheit, it takes the Celsius value, or C value, or C text, and then runs it through the function we call Fahrenheit, takes the C temperature, runs it through our return statement, and then rounds the number down after it gets the uh, digital number takes the uh, Celsius temperature, adds 32 to it, and then multiplies it by 9 fifths, or 9 divided by 5. Then our form down at the bottom displays those numbers and then contains the buttons that contain the command convert to Fahrenheit, convert to Celsius, and then that onClick function triggers our functions convert to Fahrenheit or to convert to Celsius, which then trigger the Celsius and Fahrenheit return statements. So it's all sort of a series of dominoes. You know, it's, as you click one thing, it runs each function in succession. Let's take one more look at this as it goes, and you can see the finished product. So let's say that we take the Fahrenheit temperature 100, convert it to Celsius, it goes to 37. Let's say that we take the Celsius temperature, 100, it converts it to 212, and so on. It'll even work with negative integers. Let's say that it is 20 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. That would be the equivalent of minus 29. Let's say that we have a negative temperature of minus 8 Celsius. That's the equivalent of 17 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. So as you go, you can see that it's calculating correctly. One interesting thing happens here. If I convert the 40 degrees to Celsius, and then I just don't do anything with that value, I take that value and convert it to Fahrenheit. You notice that it goes down to 39. And then convert it again, it goes down to 3, and so on. If I keep doing this, it finally settles at 32. Now, why is this happening? Well, this is an anomaly within our, uh, within our math. Notice how we were using the math.floor function. So there is some fractions of numbers there that are get, getting sort of truncated or chopped off and not being included in the calculation. So even though for the most part and for the big important numbers, you know, if I say Fahrenheit temperature 212, we get the exact correct number on the money. But some of them, because of that math.floor function, it is slightly off. So it's not 100% accurate, but it is accurate enough, and uh, that is how certain functions work, especially with math.floor. All right, so that is our demonstration on functions, and thank you for watching educator.com.